So, it would appear that we're already dipping our toes back into the Maleni trash pool this episode. I was quite looking forward to this one until I realised who directed it. We're taking a look at Demonium, a 2001 American slash German slash Italian horror film directed by Andrea Schnaz, who is probably most famous, infamous even, for directing the Violent Shit series of films, which I'm semi familiar with. I've not actually sat and watched them before, but I've seen things about them, seen clips here and there. Maybe it's a series that I'll look into talking about on this channel in the future, in the distant future. So as I say, I've never actually watched a Schnars film all the way through, but that's obviously going to change today. Let's have a look, shall we? And before we crack on, I do want to do a little strobe light warning. I want to emphasise this because this film is absolutely full of strobe lights. I'll try my best to keep it to a minimum for the clips, but some bits might crop up, so a little warning there for you. Come on! Is it about the money? How can you say that? Well, then, what do you want me to think, Hanson? Then why am I named in Arnold's will? I'm going with you. You need someone to look after you up there. Gosh, I'm sure I'm getting on your nerves with all my stories, aren't I? Yes. We start the film with a couple who are killed off by a deformed man in a hat. We then cut to a year earlier, where a guy called Arnold Berger, who's a doctor and has made some sort of medicine, is mysteriously killed. His friends and family travel to his castle for the will reading, but they're also starting to get killed off one by one. Now, this film isn't subtle or mysterious about who or why, so I'll tell you here, it's the couple at the beginning, they know about the medicine and they want to use it for their own gain and they will stop at nothing to get it so they're killing the people off in the will. This film kind of blows its load in the first half. It crams all the action and gore into that first bit and then just leaves the last section a dull and bloated mess. What did Donald dig up this fucking ragged? Well, Don't uh, walk around here. Let us leave. Well, aren't we looking sporty this morning? Well, my body is a finely tuned machine. The acting and dialogue are pretty bad here, to be honest. But you do have to think this is a bunch of Italians and Germans making an English speaking film with, according to IMDb, only a very few, a small handful of native English speakers actually on set at any given time, which kind of makes sense as to why there's so many weird turns of phrase or rhythms of speech. It does lead to some funny lines here and there, though. The characters are all mad stereotypes to a comical degree. I especially want to mention the guy who's played by Joe Zazzo, who is this, this bald guy on the back of the case, looks a bit like Anton LaVey. He just struts around all cocky, and he's pretty funny to watch, to be honest. He's got this sort of arrogant energy that's kind of entertaining. Saying this though, all the characters are pretty unlikable, so you are just sort of waiting around for them to get killed off. But on that note, the gore is the real star of the show here. It's clearly where all the money and time went into, and there's some really fun and creative kills here. His face melts, his knees exploding, plenty of decapitations, it's all very bloody and grotty. Just the sort of thing that you'd want from this sort of film. As for the way it's made and shot, it's not great, it's pretty amateur. There's a lot of sort of lazy camera angles dotted about here and there. It feels a bit haphazard and a lot of the sets do feel like cheap porn sets. Drink this, my boy. You feel a lot better. You said drink, you little piece of shit. Of course, this is prime millenni trash, and there are so many tropes in this that are 
key to that era of films. From the gothic atmosphere to the goth metal soundtrack in the background, or the sexism and the rape jokes. Of course there's the creepy stock sound effects that keep playing and it's overall just got this edgy rocker tone to it. The thing that really cements this film in that era for me though has got to be the editing. It loves to use strobe lighting effects and these like filters, loads of flashbacks with really heavy caked on filters on it and a constant use of like abrasive sound effects. It doesn't care about the audience, it wants to be loud and in your face and as annoying as possible. It was around a lot at the time, this sort of thing. I'm thinking the MySpace era and the rise in the noise music and all that sort of thing. And I'd be a liar to say that I also didn't dabble in this style back when I was a kid in some of my earlier films. This is the sort of film that you pop on in the background while you're playing Postal 2, you're illegally downloading music from LimeWire, you've got Ramstein blasting from your CD player, and you're wearing a Punisher t-shirt. You know the vibe, you know the vibe. I'm not going without you. Okay, time for the print. And you know what? It's not too bad at all here, really. I think that this was shot on film. It doesn't look digital to me. Schnauzer's been making films since the 80s, so maybe he's just a film kind of guy, and it is the early 2000s, so... It's not, it's not too bad, to be honest. It's pretty clean as well. It is a little low quality. It's clearly been crammed onto a DVD. But the picture's pretty clear for the most part, and the contrast's right as well. We actually get black blacks this time. It's not washed out and weird. The issue is probably in the sound, though. Obviously we've got all the heavy accents on set, but at the same time the sound's not been recorded the best either. I don't think this is a problem with this restoration, I guess. I think it was more just shot weird, recorded weird. Um, there's a lot of mumbling, you can't really tell what people are saying sometimes, and the volume changes quite a lot. So it's not great in that regard. There's also a stutter that I've noticed. It pops up, I think I noticed it like twice, um, where it'll sort of repeat the last word said, and it's a little bit jarring. I'll try and show some examples in the clips. And on the disc, we get the usual. Scene select, hardcore, trailers, that sort of thing. But we also get what this case loves to advertise. We get over 45 minutes of extras Clearly making up for last week's measly offerings. What do we get in these 45 minutes? We get 20 minutes of interview with the director and the cast. We get six minutes of deleted scenes and then we get half an hour of like a compilation which includes bits for Demonium like trailers and storyboards and bits like that behind the scenes bits. Uh, we also get a little promo from Lloyd Kaufman uh, of Troma fame. Um, and then we get a few more trailers for some more Schnars films and finally we get something called Untitled which might be the most early 2000s thing you can possibly think of. What is Untitled? It's just Schnars wandering around and it's like a slideshow and then a few clips of him just wandering about into buildings. I don't really know what that is but you know what? It's not too bad, we do get a fair bit crammed onto this disc. Funnily enough though, all these extras add up to 56 minutes, so they probably could have been a little more boastful on the case about this, really, couldn't they? She left yesterday by train. Apparently something happened to a family member. You think I forced you into having this baby? What's wrong with you? You? Okay, time for the case, and this one isn't amazing. Let's start with the aesthetics. The front cover's pretty good actually, but the back cover looks super trashy. Just look at this collage of people, it does not make me want to watch this at all, it's really a product of its time. Also the spine is very pixelated, I'm not sure if you can make this out on the screen, but in person it is really noticeable. The runtime's correct here which is nice, but the description 
does have a few issues that I spotted. There's a space missing here. I think this is a typo. Medically technology it just doesn't sound right. And I don't think this needs an apostrophe. This is the first DVD we've looked at with a Poundland leaflet inside as well, so let's check that out. It's got the skull from Zombie Chronicles in the background for some reason. It's a weird little addition. Uh, there is something quite nostalgic about that Poundland logo though. I remember seeing it as a kid all big. You don't really see it that often. I think they've changed it since then anyway. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is the leaflet. Uh, it gives you a little peek at what's to come as well, I guess. Overall then, despite its charms, unfortunately it uses up all its tricks in the first half and just ends with a disappointing crawl to the credits. There's some excellent gore in here, but the film that encases this gore is not worth your time. I wouldn't recommend this film, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, it's a long way from that, but I don't think I could recommend it. If you've been watching this though and you, there's something that's intrigued you about this film and you do want to check it out, the print is fine for this, it's okay and you get plenty of special features, it's not the worst. It hasn't ever been re-released on Blu-ray or anything like that, at least not in this country. Um, so this is all you get, but it could be a hell of a lot worse. It was crammed into a double pack with Nightmare and a Damaged Brain, which we covered last episode. I'm not going to talk about that one on here because I'd just be repeating myself, they're exactly the same discs. So that's this week's. Not, not great, not great unfortunately. I don't think it's going to get any better either to be honest. A part of me has been looking forward to this one based solely on the name alone but I think it's going to be more Millenni Trash. We're going to be checking out Nutbag. Nutbag.